Uh, aloha everyone okay so what we're going to do in this video lesson is do an overall market review let you guys know where i stand heading into the new week um i do not have any new swing trades mmyt is working from last week now listen it's up to you you can use the stops and trade it the way that i suggested or do you you can use a break-even stop to protect your profits on the remaining position and just let the rest work or you can use the original stops Nothing has changed. Everything is good with MMYT. So I want to make that clear. While there are no new long positions, I will review for everyone the leading mega cap and big cap stocks that I am currently long that I would love to add on pullbacks. And while I wish I only had a handful of long positions and that I had 20% of my capital in each, I want to remind everybody, please watch last weekend's video lesson and you will understand all the variables that go into the equation that is my trading is not 100% properly aligned yet. It will be. It is in the past and, you know, hopefully it will be soon. But as of right now, it is not. And there is a way still for stocks an individual stock to get a large allocation of capital. I need to have what I call a grade A setup. We have reviewed those in a lot of my previous YouTube video lessons. But just to let you guys know, there is nothing even remotely close setting up currently in the short term as a potential grade A setup on the Canslim side or even the speculative side whenever I use all of these gobbledygook indicators. And that will bring me to my next point once again. These are all secondary and tertiary indicators. You, Whenever I am trading intraday especially, all I'm ever focused on is price volume and it ends up being the 200 and 500 EMA along with VWAP intraday. But none of this is relevant. However, on an end of day basis, longer term basis, even in an hourly time frame, it helps green light go, red light stop kind of situation. And so just to keep things simple for everyone, want to remind everybody, this is the most important indicator to me, this middle pane window here. When price is above the 50 and this indicator is above the zero line, really good things can happen. When price is above 50, but this indicator is trending down, caution is warranted. But whenever it crosses again here above 50 and price is the zero line, you can see it starts to work, fails, reclaims the 50 here. But now look at the bottom pane window. You're green here, you're green here, you're green here and you have the momentum moving up, you're aligned on the 50. Now, the 50 is above the 200, you're straddling the 50, tickets indicators above zero, green, 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 above zero, coming out of a squeeze. Any coincidence? This has been the best uptrend of the entire move. Coming out of a squeeze with positive trend momentum above the zero line, green, green. Like I said, it doesn't mean it had to work. It could have easily reversed. And if you guys don't understand that about this market now, I don't think you understand algorithms and how thin the tape is. This isn't your father's or my stock market of the past. This is an algorithm stock market and anything can and will happen. And you have to trade like that. If you don't have that condition in your head that anything can and will happen, um, that's how you lose money. It's because I always operate with stops. I recommend everybody operates with stops. Moving along, QQQ is our leading index right now. When I look at this index, this is good. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We're above the 50. We're above the 200. Made a stand above the 200. But the tickets indicator is still below zero. So we're good here. We're green here, green here. But still, we're not 100% aligned. So does that mean you don't take that 50 reclaim? That's up to you guys. I don't. I didn't. I don't. I have an account that's 100% long whenever these things align. And right now, it's waiting. It's waiting for its signal. What is the signal? This indicator goes above zero. We get a pullback. I put a buy stop here. And I'm going to have to work it. I'm going to have to position size into this one since it's so far extended. What I would love to see happen is a pullback below the 50, reclaim of the 50 with the tickets indicator going above zero as we move below 50. Now, a lot of people think that these gaps need to be filled, but I'm going to remind everybody before we move along. The SPY has one, two, three open gaps. 
the last three times that happened, 2010, 2016, 2020, major uptrends resulted from all three of those setups. So if you're expecting all three gaps to get filled, it's probably not going to happen. Now, with this being said, I keep telling everybody, I want to give you guys some end of day trades. I want to give you guys some swing trades. If you review the past video lessons, um, we've done a remarkable job giving out quality long signals that have worked. Very few have ever triggered and failed on these weekend video lessons. And while I really want to do that this weekend, I cannot. My main time frame of focus remains intraday. And it actually was, I believe, a slightly red week for me. I ended the week slightly red because I took, no, I would have been green because I was green in INVO, green on TIVC, green on WAVD, red on CYTO. So let's review CYTO just to show you guys that um, things don't always work out exactly how you plan. So just to get, let you guys know, while Swing trading and end-of-day position trading hasn't been completely hot or simple or easy or smooth or non-volatile. And we're not getting those grade A high-quality setups for me to really load the boat in and to be comfortable with my positions and just sitting back. And whenever I show you the leaders that I'm watching, you're going to see that I have some great entries on some of these. But sadly, I do not have big position size because ultimately, is this a new bull market? There is an amazing trader out there called Wall Street Jesus. He does a flow show every week. I suggest you watch it. Every new bull market has come with options call sweepers repeatedly banging out of the money, above ask, out of the money, above ask. And they repeatedly hit new names over and over and over on the way up, on the way down at the start of a new bull market. We're still not seeing that yet. And I believe it's because we're still not in a QE environment. So my focus is intraday, and I tell you what, CYTO seemed like a perfect sympathy play to SGD, SGBX the day before. It's a spinoff, spinoff news, very strong. And what I like the best is that the news came after 9 a.m., so it was fresh because going into the morning, on Thursday morning, I don't think I had any trade ideas uh, for the first time in forever because the WAVD um, dip by idea came after the open. APLM was not interested. So then it came Friday, once again in the morning, I wasn't really interested in anything that was in play besides WLGS, but then CYTO sh shows up. And everybody knows um, the play that will work great when markets are hot and everything is lined up are high of day or pre-market high breaks. It's a low odds methodology right now. So the best bet is to, after these surges on this strong volume, when you get that pullback to the VWAP and it holds VWAP, you want to get long there, especially if it can line up with the 50 EMA, which is a methodology that I teach um, BWT. So we get the open and I told everybody, this is where I'm getting long, the high of the day. We trigger, I'm long. Okay. So after this first candle, this VWAP is normal. This is what it's going to look like on almost every platform. Now on Webull Trading View, as soon as the market opens, the VWAP changes from calculating all pre-market data to just the intraday data. And on this first volume bar, I believe it moved the VWAP to right here. I moved my stop to just below there. But look at this breakout candle. Look at this volume on the breakout candle. That moved the VWAP up to just slightly under break even. And then the very next bar. Now in a hot market, you break out and you just go. And now I'm trimming and trailing like I did with ABVC this week and like I did with MRAI. I posted the screenshot of my entries. I alerted the trades before I ever placed them on my end. And I showed everybody how I partial out and then take the final stop to break even and get out if it comes back and test my entry price. Right now, though, on most day trades, it's one in, one out. It extends, I take profits. Like there isn't that partialing in and partialing out right now just because of the condition of the overall market. So CYTO pulls back, shakes me out. And on this very right here, this candle, when it breaks on that strong volume above this high, should have banged right back in. Probably reduced size by half is what I would have done, but it should have gotten right back in. That's on me. Um, 
I just don't see this as a hot market. Well, uh-oh. That was fun, wasn't it? So, missed out on that move. Members didn't. Some members also kind of piked it like me. It's okay. It happens. So, this continues to be the focus, but why is this the focus? Well, this one worked. Most aren't doing this right out the gate. Would love to see this start happening again. If I can get long at 20 cents and sell at 47 cents and make 150% on my capital in one hour intraday, um, I'll take that over what I have in my setups on the end of day basis right now. All right, so to review, market, good, bullish. I'm happy. I'm looking to get long the pullbacks. You know what I'm looking to do to load the boat in the QQQ, TQQQ, if we can get that pull below the 50 with the tickets indicator. You guys have my marching orders. I'm also looking for grade A setups out there. They're nowhere to be found. Um, like I said, there's tons of video lessons with grade A setups. So I want to show you guys the stocks that I'm currently long. And I wish I had huge positions in these. Guys, I don't. And also, whenever you're cracking support levels like this and then reclaiming them like that, and then you're doing it a gap up and then an extension day, it's going to be very difficult to maintain large position in anything, period. But DKNG, you can see, 83% gain. I'm going to remind everybody, give you guys the trade, trade plan, the entry trigger, the sell stop, and I always let you know exactly what I'm doing before I take the trade. DKNG is one of my favorites. Hopefully I can get a pullback. Hopefully I can get a setup. Pocket pivot point signal off the moving averages, 20 or 50 yeah, hopefully that's what I'm looking for, but this is the leader I'm looking to pull back. And you can see when I first entered the stock, continue to watch it. Another stock, NOW. Look at when I first got long. NOW, right here. I've been adding to my position lately. Here's another one. Please give me a pullback. If you do, great. Would love to add to this position. Here's a stock I don't have a position in that I should, that I'm looking to. Amazon, looking for a pullback. Give me a pullback. Give me some kind of pocket pivot point signal, some kind of safe, high reward, low risk entry. Would love to get long Amazon. Eli Lilly, you can see where I'm long. Watching it consolidate here, waiting for a signal to add further to Eli Lilly. Just recently took a position in the home builders on the gap up on that strong volume day. With the balance of power indicator going green, there's too many leading home builders. So I just went ahead and went into the XHB. It's extended, looking for that pullback for a better, safer entry. Uber just recently got long. Why did I get long? Even though it's a little extended on this candle, so far been working. No red bop on this chart, this chart, or even a zoom two going all the way back to 2022. No heavy selling. That's why I chase this one. Meta, look at where the arrow is. Would love to add to it on a pullback. You see which stocks I like the best. Shop, one I just recently got long. Would love to get a real position on a pullback and setup. No real position yet in any of these. And if you're thinking, how do you hold so many stocks? Guys, I'm going to remind you. I would love to be long two stocks. 50% of my capital in each. But I've been doing this for so long that if I have to hold 100 positions because 100 are at the time working and then have a break-even stop on all of them, and then if I go from 100 to 20 overnight, it ain't a thing to me on an end-of-day basis. I use Interactive Brokers, Trader Workstation. It's a very quick and easy process for me. Microsoft, looking for a pull. Zscaler. Looking for a pull, and I'm long all of these. This one's been, ah, I'm pressing wrong buttons over here, guys. We're about to wrap it up, the video. NVIDIA, look at where I'm long. I wish I could say that this was a huge position. It is not. NVIDIA, and that's it. Oh, one more. Datadog. I just went long Datadog. Now, just to let you know. I've had this one in my long-term portfolio for a minute, along with Pan W and other various cybersecurity stocks. 
So just want to let you guys know, almost every single stock that I just went over, I have in long-term portfolios. And my favorite long-term names still are NVIDIA and Avgo. How do they look? They were my favorites even during the 2022 pullback. And this is why, what you're looking at. All right, everybody, you know what to do. I don't need to ask anymore. You can do it if you want. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to further your education or come join the team, the family, it's in the description below. All right, guys, have a great weekend.